guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about an absolutely giant fish. I wanna tell you another one of those big bass stories. This one was a 12 pounder, specifically 12.3 pounds. And she ate that jerk bait right there. That's the actual bait. It's a Pointer 100 Lucky Craft, Aurora black color. You can see it's all torn up. I wrote 12.3 on it so I wouldn't forget which bait it was, like I'm gonna forget. And then I upgraded the hooks on that particular one to out barbs. This fish, the reason why I wanna tell you this story over a different one is, you know, besides it being a 12 pounder, being a monster bass, this was a fish that had a huge impact on my fishing style as a whole. Uh, throughout your fishing career, you'll have you know, experiences, you'll have days that change how you fish. And in some cases you have fish that change how you fish. And this was one of those. This was a bass that literally changed my fishing style. So I want to tell you the story and then I'll kind of explain why it changed my style. Uh, so this is the bait. This is not the rod, but this is my current jerk bait rod. Again, a Pointer 100, a little bit different color because here we are in the middle of summer. I thought I might fire a few casts while we're sitting here talking about it. Um, so that day, we'd been on the water all day and it wasn't a bad bite. We'd caught a pile of fish, but we were catching the wrong fish. We weren't catching the monsters that we were looking for. It was in March and March, as we all know, in most of the country, that's prime time pre-spawn. That's when the big ones happen. So we were out there looking for a big one. And we had spent the day smashing small ones. Not what we were there to do. Still fun, but not what we were there to do that day. It was a nice day, stable condition, sunny. Uh, towards the end of the day, I pulled into a spot and the guy that I was fishing with fired a cast right up shallow, I mean dirt shallow, and sticks a seven and a half pounder. Complete game changer for our day, right? Completely turned it around. We went from catching these little rats to suddenly having a good fish. It's amazing what a, what a fish of that caliber will do for your head game. Uh, so he sticks a seven pounder, caught it on a lipless crankbait, and that was it. I mean, that, that was our day ender. So I said, all right, man, let's call it a day. Let's head in. It was a good day. Caught a bunch of good fish. Caught the fish we were here for. Let's roll. Started running back for the ramp. I got about three quarters of the way to the boat ramp. And I thought, you know, I think I want to make one more stop. And I still, I don't know what possessed me to make another stop. Because when you, oh, bumped into something when you when you end on a big fish you know it just leaves you on a high that's the fish to quit on so i have no idea why i even thought let's make one more stop but i did so i swing into this spot and it's a it's essentially a do nothing spot little tiny point but the thing is there's not much around it it's just like a little bump on the bank because there's nothing around it the fish tend to congregate there it's the spot that's different and because it's a bump that sticks out off the bank, the bait fish, if they're coming down that shoreline, they have to swim around it. So it's a natural spot for fish to congregate and ambush bait that's coming down the shoreline. So we swing in there, he's throwing an A-rig, I pick up the jerk bait behind him. And we both fire in there. And I was fishing that jerk bait slow, I was using a three twitch cadence, so essentially like this, just pop, 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 and then kill it. And you leave it on a totally slack line. At pointer 100, it's a suspending jerk bait. So it'll just cut, 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 and then it just sits there in the water column. And you leave it dead slack, and then I'd give it a couple more. Twitch, 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 kill it. And I was giving it a long count, like a five to seven seconds of just suspended in the water before you move it again. Because in March, that water's still pretty cold. And you can get those fish that are kind of lethargic. You can get them where if it sits there long enough, they'll come up to look at it. They have time. They don't have to move quickly. And then the next time you move it, they're on it because they're already right there looking. 
So I was using that three twitch cadence. I'm on like my fourth or five, fifth set of twitches. Slack line. And by the way, I'm using light gear. So still a rod very similar to this. Six foot 10 is my jerk bait rod, uh, medium action. That's the right rod to give you action and the, the rod to support it. So once you've hooked up, you don't lose the fish, but you can still get great action out of the bait. So I'm throwing that little six foot 10. That particular day, eight pound fluorocarbon. Normally I throw braid like this, braid to a liter, but that day it was eight pound fluoro. Really light line, really light hooks. I'm on my fourth or fifth set of twitches and right through all that slack, clear as day, I just feel a thunk. I mean, she ate it. She didn't kind of eat it, she smashed it. So I set on this fish, I load up. As soon as I set, there's no, hey, I've got a fish on. Hey, maybe it's a good one. It was, oh no. I mean, I just locked up. The rod folded up, everything locked up, and I knew instantly, as soon as the rod bowed, that I was tied into a giant fish. So I sat and that rod folds, and I'm thinking, oh, here we go. So immediately I reach up and I give my drag a quarter turn. That was the smartest thing I could have done. I hadn't seen the fish yet. She hadn't even started to run yet. But I just knew from that weight, there was only one thing this could be, it was a big one. Now I was not thinking 12 pounds, but I knew it was a big one. So that was just back that drag off a quarter turn. That's basically just a safety net. If that fish decides to surge, I'm gonna have a little bit of drag there. I haven't even checked it yet. I don't know how loose it is or isn't, but I know that it's, it's loose enough that if she bolts, I stand a good chance that I can adjust my drag and fight her from there. As soon as I make that quarter turn, she comes straight up and does a tail walk. She was not 20, 25 feet from the boat when she does this walk. And for a fish of that caliber to do a tail walk is incredibly rare because they're so obese when they get up into the 11s, 12s, 13 pounds. They're so obese that it's very hard for them to actually get their weight up above water and hold it there. But this fish did, she was hot. She came up full tail walk on the surface, head thrashing. I was so glad I backed that drag down because I see I've barely got this fish hooked. It's all bad. <laughs> so I back it down further. I get that drag set to where she can just rip line all she wants. And the guy that I'm with jumps for the net, gets in position and I turn to him and I said, don't worry about it. You've got a lot of time. And he didn't know what I meant, but what I meant was this fight is going to go on forever. I knew I had her on eight pounds because I could see when she came up and tail walked, I only had one hook point in this fish. And that hook point stayed by the way, she was hooked right here. One point inside out. In fact, I think I've even got a picture of it. And if I do, you'll see it on the screen right now, but barely hooked. Uh, we just started to follow this bass. She just started digging and taking line. And I just set the trolling motor on five, got on it, just kept that rod bent and just followed her. She took us 50, 60 yards before this fight was over. I mean, it lasted. Normally when you hook a giant, especially on like a swim bait rod, I mean, it's over in like 10 seconds. You grind, 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 grind in the net. This is the complete opposite. This went on for minutes following this bass. She would dig down to the bottom, but in March there's not a lot of grass. So I wasn't too worried about it. All she'd do is just get down there, follow the bottom. She'd try to come up and jump, but she really didn't have the power for another tail walk. It was just a waiting game. Be patient. Don't pull that hook out. Don't bend that hook out and it's going to be okay. And that's what it was. We just waited and waited and waited. I started slowly applying pressure, raising her up to the boat. And I want you guys to pay attention to these details because this stuff is the difference between hooking a giant fish and landing a giant fish on light tackle. The majority of those really big fish, they're lost in the last five to 10 feet because you get them boat side, now you can see them, your heart starts going and you know if you just pull them a little bit, you can get that net around them. Well, that little bit is what bends you out. You end up losing those fish. A lot of people lose the fish of a lifetime right at the net. 
So I just started applying minimum pressure, slowly raising this bass. And we could see her, the water was pretty clear. She was coming up broadside to us and just kind of digging, quartering away. And I'd let her dig and then raise her up. And she'd dig and I'd raise her back up. And finally, we got that net under And I'm sure we've got some photos of this fish. We don't have video, unfortunately, but we do have some photos of her. So I'm sure those are probably here where you can see them right now. Truly an amazing fish, very short and just obese. I mean, her build is that high teen or build. In my opinion, she's a young fish. Uh, this has been a few years now, so that fish has probably put on a lot of weight because all she needed was the length. As that bass gets longer, she's only going to get fatter. Truly the body shape of a monster, monster bass. Uh, she was amazing. But I'll tell you, why was this fish so important to me? This fish was a complete and utter game changer. Uh, when I started catching monster bass, I was doing it on swim baits. And then over time, I started branching into more traditional things. I caught a couple double digits on jigs, swim jigs, spinner baits, crank baits, yeah, some different things. Uh, but I had never caught one on a jerk bait. This fish opened the door to a whole new world for me because jerk baiting, and I don't even want to get hung up on the fact that it's a jerk bait. I want to get hung up on the fact that it is a, it's a reactive bite. It's a triggering bite. And what I mean by that is when we throw those big swim baits, you're very reliant on the bass to be fooled. If you're crawling a Huddleston on the bottom, that bass has time to come up, look at that bait, and decide whether or not she wants to eat it. If she doesn't want to eat it, if she sees the hook, if she's eaten a Huddleston before, if she gets nervous, she's gone. It's not reactive. You're not triggering them. You're putting a presentation in front of her and hoping and praying that she makes a mistake. Well, the jerk bait is not that at all. The jerk bait is that hard darting, reactive, aggressive, trigger and this was one of those fish that taught me that you could still trigger giant bass i knew i could trigger schooling fish right i could i could trigger little ones all day long i didn't realize that those 10 plus pounders even those 13 plus pounders are susceptible to being triggered it's built into how these fish operate and that was a game changer because we've since caught a ton of fish, not only on a jerk bait, on other baits too, by triggering them into biting. Fish that would never make a mistake. Fish that I could throw a Huddleston past them a thousand times, they'd never eat it. I could run a glide bait by them, they'd never eat it. Because they've seen those baits, they've made those mistakes, whether they got caught or they got off, they're not making those mistakes again. But when you've got a bait, and especially it shines in a schooling situation because that point had a lot of fish on it, had a lot of small fish on it. What'll happen when a giant is in a schooling situation where she's mixed in with smaller, for lack of a better word, dumber bass, when she's in there with a bunch of little juveniles and you can rev them up and get them aggressive, more often than not, that monster, that fish that would never make a mistake if she was out on her own, she'll get caught up in that schooling, in that feeding, and all of a sudden she'll make a mistake that she would have never made if she was by herself. And she will eat a little pointer 100 jerk bait. So I hope that helps you guys. When you're out there fishing, I'm not telling you don't throw giant baits. We throw giant baits and we see great success doing it. But what I'm telling you is that's not always your best choice. Even as we're teaching you how to throw big baits, how to throw glide baits, how to do all these different things, don't forget that you can still catch those true monster, monster bass on traditional baits, especially in schooling situations. Spring, summer on the ledges, and then fall again when they start chasing bait fish up shallow. Those are prime times where you can use a smaller bait to trigger that monster bite and catch a fish that would never bite in any other situation. I hope that helps you guys. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm sure we'll tell you guys some more stories of monster fish in the future. 
In the meantime, we'll keep teaching, sharing our stories, our experiences out on the water. Thanks guys, and we'll talk to you soon.